from Ezra, Pelops came to the shores of Greece. His son was Atlas, and from him came two braver sons, skilled in the arts of war. The others Agamemnon rules the king, while Menelaus holds the throne of Sparta. For Helen's sake, they raise the mighty fleet and sub themselves for Troy. But Artemis, beloved sister of the god Apollo, send vaccine winds to rustle themselves and swam them from the rocky shore of Oblis. Inga to conquer Troy, and so advance his brother's bed. Agamemnon ordered Calchas, prophet of the host, to seek the will of Zeus and to proclaim the cause of their misfortune and the chore. O king, he spoke, you must fulfill the vow you made to Artemis to offer up the dearest treasure that the year would bring. The daughter born to you and Clitonisra, she is a treasure you must sacrifice. I was and am that daughter called the king, but I shall give my life to steal the wings. The treacherous of this is the plot that brought me innocent to a bliss. A messenger arrived with joyous news. The Enya is to wed Achilles, now dress her in her bridal gown and send her quick to a bliss. So, I went at the groom that waited for me at the altar was the sacrificial knife of Agamemnon. But father did not kill me as he thought. Artemis called me up into the earth and left a deer to spill her blood for me. Since then, I serve the goddess at this altar here in Barbarian Taurus, far from home. Thus, the king of Taurus is a savage who sacrifices any curriculum upon his shores. But I must say the blessing, though others carry out the bloody deed. Last night, I had a dream that fight of I seemed to be transported to the king. To the room I slept in when I was a girl. When suddenly an earthquake shook the palace and tore the roof and pillars to the ground. Yet in the wreckage, one lone pillar stood that seemed to have a visit of a man. At once I rose and washed the pillar clean, as I do here upon this bloody altar. To prepare the Greeks from those put to death. I fear the meaning of my dream is clear. The pillar is Orestes, my dear brother, the son of Agamemnon and he is heir, the last support of the house of Atreus. And since all those whom I anoint with water are destined to be killed, my dearest brother, you must be dead as well. Where are my mates? Poor captive Greeks who thus gave to me with their sisters. I shall mourn my brother.
Apollo, will you ever give me a rest? You chose me to avenge my father's murder by killing her who gave me birth. And you let the vicious, naked furies hated by the gods pursue me as their prey and drag me ever in war over sea and land. A wary outcast, exiled from the world. And now you promise that you will end my pain by driving me here, in this forsaken land, where shepherd Greeks are sacrificed upon the altar of your sister Artemis. What promise did Apollo make to you? That if I find the statue of the goddess, which men of Taurus claim fell from the sky, and bring it with me safely back to Greece, then I shall find an end to all my toil. Then why, O Restis, do you look so troubled? The walls are high, and the temple is guarded day and night by watchful eyes. If we are found, this stone shall drink our blood. Shall we not flee? No! We must obey the gods. Along the coast where the Black Sea beats, our caves where we can hide until darkness falls. Under the cloak of night, we will return and force the temple doors apart. They say that once Jason and his Argonauts braved this godforsaken sea to find the Golden Fleece, we too must trust the gods. Our youth and strength shall help us win the prize. Virgin maidens, we to serve the virgin goddess in the land of Greece. We all were born, but now we make our home at the edge of the world. Daughter of Agamemnon, who led the Greeks to Troy. Prepare the altar for the sacrifice. 
What country are they from? They are from Greece. What are their names? The one is called Pilates. And the other a youth. We do not hear his name. We found him where the water meets the cliff. In a cave, they see it hallowed from the rocks. What calls could the lure? A herdsman to the sea. To wash our cattle in the salty foam. I sense there is some terror in your eyes. Now tell me quickly how you captured them. And why you look as if you have seen a god. When we first heard their voices in the cave, we drew back to discuss our strategy. But while we heard their voices in the cave, one of the youth ran yelling from the cave and dashed himself upon the rocks and tore at his hair and cried aloud to his companion, Beloved, can't you see the snakes that twist about their head? Are her claws and wings not visible? She hungers for my blood. A flood of fire issues from her throat. I must escape. But there was nothing there, only our cattle lowing in the sand. Then the stranger grabbed his sword and in rage swooped down upon our poor defenseless herd. You'd think that they were demons straight from hell, the way that madman lunged and lashed at them. The surging tide grew crimson with their blood. At last, the stranger dropped his sword and fell upon the sand. Seizing the chance, we rushed the beach and pelted him with stones. That's when Pilates left the cave, flung his cloak around the spread and lifted high his sword. I would much rather fight a dragon than that man, like something more than human. He repelled each stone we threw and drove us from the beach. By then, the stranger spit had passed, and he, with sword in hand, exhorted his companion, Beloved, let us die, if die we must, but let us die as heroes. And then the two of them charged, like men who welcome death. More herdsmen came to swell our ranks and fill the air with stones, but not a single stone could reach them. I swear in priests, not a single stone. In the end, exhaustion overtook them both, and we used our stones to knock away their swords and brought them bound in chains before the king. He sent them now to you for preparation. Two priests, two Greek youths shall feel the knife along their throats. A few more Greeks like these, and you shall be avenged for our least. Well done. Go now and bring the strangers here to me. How my heart has changed. Before this day, I pitied Greeks who landed on our shores and wept for those whose sacrificial rights they had received. But now that my arrest is no longer sees the sun, my heart has turned against my fellow Greeks. Let all of them receive a bloody death. I will not weep if only my mellows. For he, Southern, could rust their ship upon our shore. There, my friends, will be another of these. How, oh, Father, could you dare to kill your daughter while all the women stand in Mary's rights? Black Hades, no Achilles was the groom who chose for me, a bride all drowns with blood. Oh. Fickle goddess, how can you be trusted? You say the man who sells another's blood cannot come near your altar. Even those who touch a corpse are touched by you unclean. And yet, upon your altar, you demand the bloody sacrifice of living men. Oh, such things cannot be true. The Tarians who take a savage joint slain men, protect the last for blood upon the gods. I never will believe the gods to wrong. The lust and greed of men drives them to the sea. They sail on ships for wealth and Ship of Helen of Troy, how would our lady 
peaceful beds and simple joys away from these barbaric rites of blood. 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 These prisoners are sacred. Lose the chains. Oh, most unhappy youths. What mother were you? And from what father did you get your names? Perhaps you have a sister back in Greece who longs for your return, but so not see it. The gods are silent. Destiny he is dark. Unhappy strangers, what has brought you here? Alas, you never more shall see your home. Why do you mourn when we, not you, shall die? I count that man a fool who, faced by death, gives away grief and weeps aloud. We knew the dangers of this place, and yet we came. Then answer me with truth. Are you Pilades? Not I, but he. And is this man your brother? At heart, but not by blood. Have you a name? None that I wish to tell. Where are you from? Why do you wish to know? You tell me nothing. What matters, country or name to the dead? Why do you hide it from me? Very well. McKean is the country that gave me birth. Can this be true? Why did you leave me here? In part by choice. In part I am an exile. Can you not tell me more? And private grief I will not tell. All else you may inquire. Is it true that Troy has fallen to the Greeks? It is. And what of Helen? Does she leave? She has returned to Sparta with Menelaus. She should have died. She did great wrong to me. To me as well. But what does it matter now? What of the prophet Calchas? Does he live? They say that he is dead. The gods be praised. And what of him? The wise Odysseus. He lives, but he still has to return to his home. The curse of Artemis be on his head. Curse him not, for he's already cursed. And what of brave Achilles? He is dead. Oh. What profit now all the marriage rites in a bleach? Those marriage rites were treacherous. My lady. How is it that you know so much of Greece? I too was born in Greece, and I was lost. If that be so, then ask me all you wish. What of that king, whom all accounted blast? Who do you mean? The lordly Agamemnon. I cannot say. Please, tell me. He is dead. Oh, it's me. Why should you weep for him? His glory once was great. And now he's dead. Murdered by a woman's bloody hand. How can this be? Do not inquire me further. But tell me this. Ask it a mistra. Me. She is dead. The killer was her son. Vengeance for his father's murder. The deed was evil, but he acted justly. If only the gods would bless his righteous acts. Where are their children born, Chagamemnon? A daughter named Electra still remains. And what of her they say was sacrificed? Iphigenia was her name. She is dead. I 
pity her. And the one who took her life, she, a virgin, died to save a whore. Oh, what of Agamemnon's son? Does he? Everywhere. And nowhere does he live. He lives? <laughs> no longer shall I trust to dreams. Alas, the gods themselves cannot be trusted. Like dreams, they turn our head with pretty lies. In heaven as on earth there is confusion, and those who trust the gods are led to ruin. I knew of one that trusted so, and perished. And then what of us? We too would learn if our dear parents live. But who can tell us this? There is a way, my ladies. We can learn. A way that shall prove good to you as well. Would you be willing if I spared your life to bear for me a message to the king? You know the city, and I do believe you know my friends. Carry the letter then, and take as your reward your life. But he, the man who travels with you must remain. He must be killed, and thus appease the law. In all, lady, you speak well, but one, I will not leave my friend here to die for me. No! Give him the letter. Send him to peace. Then he may spill my blood to please your goddess. Pilates is my friend. I hold this life more precious than my own. Courageous spirit. You must be noble born. If only he, my brother, back in Greece, could be like you. Your friends will take the letter. You shall stay and win the death. Your noble heart has mocked. Will it be you who slay me or another? Your hair I shall anoint with sacred water. But the killing shall be done by those within. There is a darkness within this temple. Ah, that I had my sister near, that she might wrap my body in a shroud. Or you, your sister cannot help you now. For she lives far from this barbaric land. But I shall do her part. And wash your corpse with fragrant oil. And on your pile, pour the purest honey from the mountain bees. Watch them closely while I fetch the letter. But do not change them. We pity you, who soon shall face the night. There is no need to pity me. Farewell. But you we envy, you who soon shall see your home. I go, but with a heavy heart. Do you share my troubled thoughts, Pilatus? This lady knows about Calchas and Odysseus, Achilles and the lordly Agamemnon. Who can she be? I am not sure, Orestes. But I am troubled more that I should live what you must die. Will they say in Greece, because I am the husband of Electra, your sister in the heir of Agamemnon? I fear that they shall slander my name and say that I killed you and that I might take your crown. The shame would be much greater if I fled and let you here to die. I do not fear, but welcome death. What joy do I have in life now that Apollo has abandoned me? You must survive, Pilates. 
and raise strong sons to bear my name, and raise a tomb that I may be remembered by my kin. The gods, I tell you, have abandoned us. Why else would I think that us here in this forsaken land? I swear, I will build a glorious tomb. Yet yield me in this. Though it may seem that the gods have abandoned you, do not forsake Apollo. Fortune may still turn and prove a friend to Alas! you. Alas! No oracle can help me. She returns. Dear stranger, is the letter. Do not fail me. Pilatish shall be true. But will the king allow him to return to Greece alive? I swear by Artemis. He shall be safe. And I buy Zeus to keep this letter safe. I trust you will deliver it. And yet, I fear the letter may be lost at sea. Therefore, I shall recite to you the words that you yourself may be a living letter. I shall remember all. Now tell to me this message and the one who is to receive it. Orestes is the one to whom I write, and this the message. She, who died at least, is not dead. She writes to you this letter. Can this be true? Return to her life. Where is she? She stands before you now. But let me finish. My dearest brother, come to me in Tauris and rescue me from this barbaric land where I am forced to practice bloody rites. What is this place? Pilates, shall I speak? Save me now or I shall curse your house. Repeat his name, Pilates. Don't forget. Gods above! Why do you call the gods? It's nothing. Tell us now how the letter ends. The god has saved me from my father's knife by substituting in my place a deer, since then transported me across the sea that I might serve her temple here in Avlis. These are the words you have sworn you will deliver. My lady, I've never sworn to do such light of a task. Behold, I shall fulfill it now. Oh, Rusties, take this letter from your sister. Most gladly, but I will leave it sealed now, for I shall grasp a much greater joy than worth. My sister, let me take you in my arms. My sister, do not turn away from me. How can you be my brother? When he dwells in Argos, in the city of Mekin. But I am here. I'm not in Mekin. I am Orestes, and I am your brother. Give me proof. Describe our father's house. I will do better. In your maiden chamber, our father hung the spear that Pelops used to win the bride who bore him, Atreus. And on that wall hung a golden cloth on which you once embroidered for our mother, a golden lamp against the rising sun. My dearest brother, it is you indeed. And do you, my sister, risen from the dead. When last I saw you, you were but an infant, and now you stand before me as a man. Oh, marvelous day of wonder and of joy. Oh, sister, may the days to come be blessed. My joy is so great, I fear that it's all flying to the earth. 
and leave me here behind. Sister, in our lives, we both were blessed. But in our lives, fortune has proved our foe. Alas, when Father drew, he saw the against me. I wasn't there, but I can see it now. Not as a bride, but as a victim led before the altar. Alas! My father, how unfatherly your deed. And see how close it came to fathering another just as evil in its wake. My sister, what if you have killed your brother? How dreadful is the bed with have escaped. But how rest is will really it I fear that fortune still may prove our enemy. How can I hope to send you from this land? The way my foot is far, too treacherous, and yet the sea holds dangers of its own. How marvelous and strange the things we've seen! What God can save these orphans of the storm? My brother, now that we have been united, tell me of Electra, is she well? She is. Her husband stands before you now. The gods be praised. That she should be the wife of one so true. You do us honor, sir. But now, Restless, you must tell me this. How is it that you stand your rocks in Taurus, rather than sit upon the king's throne? My friend, I know you have much to share, but now is the time for action, not words. Good husband of my sister, you speak well. But I will not be silenced in this matter. <clears throat> My friend, she has the right to know our struggle. No sooner did I take my mother's life than the fury straight from hell assaulted me. Since then, all men and land drive me out. Did not Menelaus take you? He could not risk the curse upon my head. He now rules Sparta and Mekin both. And what of you? Pilates, by my side, we went to Delphi, the home of the Lord Apollo. He who had ordered me to kill my mother. By his command, we made our way to Athens, where we were taken in and shown some pity. And although they looked with horror upon my deed, they did not cast me out. They called a trial that I may face my accusers. The Furies, their wrath was great, but my defense was greater. Apollo testified on my behalf. Athena also took my side, and when the votes were tied, she chose to set me free. She then convinced the Furies to remain with their in Athens and to renounce their anger. Beneath the temple now they live in peace, showering blessings on the bridal bed. But there were some Amongst the furious who refused Athena's offer, vowing that they will never rest until I pay blood for blood. Again, I sought Apollo in his shrine and swore that I would not eat or drink until he promised to release me from my torment. In Taurus, he replied, seek out the image of the goddess that once fell from the sky. Remove it from the temple and return. The moment that you will set it up in Athens, the furies and your torment shall be gone. gone. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> My sister, I beseech your aid in this great task. If 
the stature returns to Greece. The house of Venom will be saved. How terribly the wrath of heaven saves the offspring of unlucky Atreus. My greatest wish, Orestes, is to see the fortune of our house return again. And yet, I fear the goddess. And the king will kill me if I help you steal the image. You must take both the statue and your sister on your ship. We must escape together. But if you cannot take me, I'm resigned to give my life that you save our house. The son and not the daughter must come first. I have killed my mother, but I will not be the killer of my sister life as well. We live and die together. Both will return, or both will stay in Taurus forever. Do not let your heart be troubled, sister. If Artemis opposed this, then Apollo wouldn't have asked us to take her image. But how can it be done? By killing Thoros. You cannot kill your host. I must forbid it. Agreed. What if we hide within the temple? It's guarded night and day. Then we are lost. A moment. Brother, there may be a way that I can use your sorrow as a weapon. What do you have in mind? To tell the king you cannot be sacrificed because you are polluted by the sin of matricide. He will agree. To which I will reply that I must take you to the shore and cleanse you of your taboo guilt. But what of Philadis? I will tell the king who shows in your pollution. But how shall this grant for us the image? I will say that you may bore to touch the image so that it too must travel to the shore. Once we and it are safely on the shore, my ship shall speed us home. <laughs> Good plan. But. What of these, your maidens? Can you trust them? My friends, companions of my grief, I turn to you for aid. You have the power to bless or curse our plan. Our lives are in your hands. Can you not see the way that fate has joined the three of us? Will you not assist the gods in working out our destiny? This vow I take. If we return to Greece, I shall do all I can to rescue you and reunite you with your families. I call upon our many years together on your right hand, and your most tender cheek, and on the lives of all you hold most dear. If you will help us, we may live. If not, then ruin and despair shall take us all. Take heart, good lady, and fair youths of Greece, we swear by mighty Zeus, we will assist you. Blessed are you all. But now, Orestes, you two must follow me into the temple. The king will soon appear expecting news that you have both been slain upon the altar. Now, Artemis, who rescued me from Avlis, put forth your hand to rescue me again. High above the Halbian swords, 
lamenting its mate in song. We too lament, but lack the wings to rise above our grief and glimpse our homes. Oh, the rivers of tears that flow from eyes that have lost their city. We envy those who have never known happiness, for we have no joy and had it torn away. In our dreams we see you, lady, sailing on your ship to Greece. We feel the winds and smell the foam, and hear Apollo singing to the lyre. If only we could ride on the chariot of the sun, to stand again on the dancing floor, where we as girls wore veils of richest crimson. Well, is the priestess Artemis brought to me from Greece to serve her shrine? Has she performed the rites? By now the stranger's body should be burning. Behold, she comes and will answer you herself. Daughter of Agamemnon, why do you hold the goddess in your hands? Come back. Do not come closer. Are you mad? My wits are clear, but there is much amiss. The victims that you brought me are stained. How can you know for sure? I hold the proof. The image swim around upon its base. Perhaps it was an earthquake. It was not. The image turned its own and closed its eyes. What could these youths have done to cause such wonders? They shed the blood of she who gave them birth. Not even a barbarian would commit so foul a deed, and yet <laughs> your Greeks. Be certain, King, that all the lords of Greece expelled these sinners from the lands. I see. Tell me how you got them to confess. Oh, King Thoas, they are crafty. Even now, they try to twist my heart to take their side. They told me that Orestes, my dear brother, is still alive in Greece and longs to see me. I hope they have not turned you with their lies. I love the goddess, king, and hate all Greeks. Well, you should. Tell me now, what would you have me do with these two? Hateful Greeks. The law commands they must be put to death. So be it. Let the old the fires be lit. Not yet. I first must take them to the shore. For I, the salty foam may cleanse their guilt. And in that foam as well, I shall restore the sanctity of these most holy images. I journey to the shore. Can you not hear the waves crashing behind the temple? The rites I practice call for solitude. Then you shall have it. I will not obstruct the rituals by which you make us clean. The Greeks are in the temple. Let them be chained. Such precautions necessary. Yes, deceitfulness. Be strong upon the Greeks. What further service may I do for you? Give orders that your servants fail their faces and that your citizens remain indoors while I perform the rites. Shall be done. Your people must be guarded from the stain that follows in the footsteps of the strangers. I praise you for the love you show to Taurus. Then. Let me show my love for you as well. Be careful when I lead them to the shore that you avert your eyes. Remain within the shrine till I return. What shall I do? With sacred fire and water, pours the temple. And if I tie, do not be alarmed. All shall be done exactly as you wish. Bring forth the 
strangers, so they may be cleansed. Stand back. Do not come closer. Cover your heads and veil your eyes. Let those about you hurt, and those with child keep free from the pollution in our midst. Oh, virgin Artemis, I take this vow. When I have cleansed the bloody guilt from your image, I will bury it to a purer temple where no stain or foul corruption can be found. We shall be happy there. I say no more. In the name of the earth, there lived a monstrous serpent. The Lord Apollo slew the beast and took to himself the prophetic powers of Delphi. But the earth envied Apollo his knowledge of the future. Visions and dreams she sent to men that they might scorn the oracles of the god. Apollo, still a boy, flew to Olympian Zeus and begged him to restore his rights. The doting father smiled and bowed his head. And that is why today the dreams that haunt our nights are dark and vain and veiled with terror. Only Apollo sees what lies ahead. Chant a loud, barbaric hymns 
in words that we could not understand. And though we feared that the men's chains might break, our greater fear of seeing things forbidden kept us still. After an hour had passed, we found our courage, and down to the shore we charged. But they were gone! Instead, we see a mighty Grecian ship with fifty wars pulling at the oar. The captain Greeks, whose chains had been removed, was swimming swiftly to the boat. But she, who clutched the image in her hand, was slower. We seized her from behind and held her fast. Uh, Release her! cried the Greek. I am Orestes, her brother and the son of Agamemnon. I mean to take my sister home to Greece. But when he saw that we would not let you go, he and his friend attacked us on the beach. They had no swords but beat us with their fists and our faces and limbs were covered in blood. As we retreated to the cliff for safety, Orestes took his sister on his shoulder and rushed into the surf. The oarsmen threw a ladder down and lifted him aboard. The crew roared out with joy and grabbed their sails as he furled them into the wind. Just then, the waves increased and rocked the ship as almost grounded on the shore. At once, Greece lifted up her arms and cried out loud, Oh, save us, Arthemis! Forgive me for my theft and deliver us from this barbaric land. I know you love Apollo, and the love of my brother is no less. Have pity, goddess. And come with us to Greece. Her brother and the oars were great as well. But still, the waves continued in their fury. My lord, the sun inside of us is what to see fall for joy. We can still stop their ships before it keeps our rocky shores. Send cables so that we may bind it fast. This theft and last for me must be avenged! Unhappy oh, lady! If the king shall catch you, you and your brother both shall die. Enough! Go! My horsemen mount your steeds and ride. And you, my sailors, launch your ships. Together, we shall hem them in and drag them from the ship. These Greeks, scorn the goddess. And our land, our bodies shall be thrown upon the rocks. As for you, women who have aided them, your death shall follow theirs. Now, body bad! Call off your men, King Thoros. Listen to me. I am Athena, and I order you to put your weapons down. Apollo has commanded all the things that you have seen. He it was who sent Orestes here to free him from the anger of the Furies. And he as well who ordered him to bring his sister home together with the image of his dear sister, Artemis. Be still, King Thoas. I have sought Poseidon's aid, and he has calmed the waves. Orestes' ship is sailing now upon the sea of glass. Orestes, though your ship be far away, I am a goddess. And I know my voice will reach your ears. Pay heed to what I tell you. When you have come to Athens, raise a temple where Artemis of Taurus shall be praised. Erect her image there and set up rites commemorating how your life was spared. Each year, in memory of your escape, a victim must be slain upon the altar. 
Last time you were in Athens, I cast my vote to free you from your sentence. So heed my words and do not fail in this. Iphiania, though you sail to Greece, your final home will not be in Mekin. It is my will that you shall serve the shrine your brother builds to honor Artemis. There you shall live, and there your life shall end. From Athens, you must send a golden ransom to Taurus to redeem your loyal maidens, that they may serve beside you at the shrine. King Thos, when the ransom comes, make haste to send these women on a ship to Greece. Do not be angry, Thos. All is well. Daughter of Zeus and most exalted lady, Athena, I shall not resist your will. I am not one who disobeys the gods. I put aside my anger towards Orestes for bearing off with his sister and the image. I shall make no attempt to stop their ship. Rather, I shall arrange to send these women back home to Greece whenever you command. Only a fool disputes the will of Zeus. I honor you, King Thoros, for your wisdom. The power and necessity of fate rules over gods and mortal men alike. And now, you ocean winds, breathe soft and warm, that Agamemnon's children may be carried in safety to my city in the west. I shall go with them and guard the image of my sister Artemis. And with you also, maidens, I will be.